All right, it's showtime. Welcome, everyone. I was answering people in the chat, and I didn't realize that uh, we have to get going. You are here to learn some English. I'm here to teach some English. I thought at first, why don't we do a cooking live stream? But then I realized I can't cook. I think it's best if I just stick to teaching English. I hope everyone uh, is doing well. I hope everything is sounding all right. Angelo is here. Welcome. It's been a little while. I know Angelo is very busy in Cutter. I asked him earlier. I don't think he responded, but is he going to go to the amusement park that is opening in Saudi Arabia? They're supposed to have the world's fastest roller coaster. I love roller coasters, by the way. Hey, I want to give a huge shout out to Rod, the Brazilian English teacher. He is in here moderating the chat as well as talk Italian with Aroni. They both have YouTube channels. You should check them out. They are great teachers. Rod teaches English. Aroni teaches Turkish. No, Italian. That's why his name is talk Italian with Aroni. Danny's here. Welcome. A lot of people in the chat. I would love to say hi to everyone. Amina's here. Eric is here. What's going on? And you know what else? We do actually have a new member, and that is Maria. Thank you so much for joining the club. There are a bunch of members' videos for you. Check it out. Um, this slide, this lesson actually has slides that will go with it, and those are available to everybody this week. They're usually only available to members. But I hit the wrong button and I thought, hey, maybe everyone can use them. So as you see me using slides today to teach this lesson about spring, check them. No, just check the community tab and that is available. That's available. So let's officially welcome Maria here with this thing I always like to play for new members. New member, make sure you check the members tab for the discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. All right. Thank you, Maria. Check out the discord for sure. Don't want to do that again. Check out the members discord uh, because there might be a chat going on tomorrow and um, we'd love to have you join it. I think I'm going to be able to join that chat tomorrow so let me get rid of uh i don't like my name there all the time so i'm gonna get rid of that and then we'll get uh we'll get everything going here boom yeah today's lesson is going to be about english words that we use here in the united states to talk about spring and i'm not sure if your favorite season is summer or maybe spring or maybe winter or fall we say fall in the united states but if you go to england you might hear only autumn autumn i've spoken with gino from real everyday english he has a great youtube channel as well and he says they do not use fall in england for the spring for the for the season but we do yeah, let me just get rid of my name here. If you don't know my name, my name is Brent. I'm this guy. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Oh, Suzanne is here. Oh, I want to say hi to Ivana, too. Ivana, how are you? Yeah, I know, I know Luke for sure. Luke and I, we share the same attitude when it comes to weather. We like warm weather. We like being on the beach. Doesn't get any better than that. So where I, oh, but where I live, Elena, I know Elena is from Russia. Where I live, fall can be awesome also. It's just not as hot, but the leaves are changing. Today, we're talking about spring, and I have a love-hate relationship with spring 
So if you have a love hate relationship with something, I means sometimes you love it, sometimes you hate it. I hate spring at the beginning of spring. Where I live, there is often a lot of snow. So at the beginning of spring, there is a lot of melting. We're going to be talking about thawing later on, but melting, you know, when you have some ice, you take it out of the refrigerator, you put it in your drink, that ice is going to melt. So when we have snow melting, it gets really wet. And I would love to share something with you. I think I can. I have a couple videos that I would like to share. This is what it looks like around my part of the world at the beginning of spring. I'm going to show you a video of my school parking lot where I teach, the middle school that I teach at. And this was maybe six weeks ago. We still had snow on the ground. The sun was warm. The snow was melting, but this is what it looks like as it's melting. This is one reason why in spring there's so much melting snow. It's making pretty much a river. Yeah, that river, that should not have been there. I should have taken this drink while that video was playing. I have another video, though, to go. And this other video is going to show you what it's like towards the end of spring. Where we are right now, it's actually pretty warm. And it's a lot better for spring right now. I filmed this just a couple days ago. Springtime where I live here. I wanted to push that button. the northern part of the United States. Why is it States. not working? There are some birds chirping. Mm. You might be able to hear them. There are some patches of green grass, not too many. And I did see a couple purple flowers starting to sprout, starting to emerge from the ground, starting to bloom, starting to blossom, but they're still a lot of dead things around and it will be a few more weeks before everything fully comes back to life. All right, Ibrahim, whoops, Ibrahim might be a little confused. This is a live stream, but with the software that I have now, I can play videos. So it's a little of both. We're doing a lesson about spring today, but I could actually take you outside for spring a couple times. So there is another one, though, that we'll, we'll talk about here. Yasin is from Iraqi Kurdistan. Whoa, well, we're just, we're just going to talk about spring today. So maybe I'll get to some questions at the end, but I actually have a lesson prepared. Oh, it's right there. Some slides on spring vocabulary that you might hear. I think every teacher on YouTube has to talk about spring. And this is my year. This is my year to talk about spring. So the first slide I'd like to share with you is a very common saying we have, and that is April showers bring May flowers, which is one of the reasons why I have a love-hate relationship with spring. During April, it's often very rainy, but during May, it's often very beautiful, and we have a lot of life around us. We have flowers emerging from the ground, crops, fruits, vegetables growing, leaves are coming back on the trees. As you saw that video before, birds are chirping. So late spring, where I live, can be a wonderful time of year. Early spring, sometimes you get a river flowing through your parking lot that shouldn't be there. So I am not a big fan of early spring. Love late spring. Oh, so it looks like Iraq is having spring. Almost, almost. 
Yeah, so you will often hear this as a common saying. When it's raining in April, people will often tell themselves, well, April showers brings May flowers. So even though it's raining right now, we may not like that. It might keep us inside. Just wait. Good things are going to come because that rain, those showers, actually going to bring some nice things for us to look at. And I did see Aroni talk about mud season. And guess what? I have I have the next slide. I think is about mud, if I remember. Oh yeah. The next slide is about mud. And that's why in the spring, we often will have a lot of water. You just saw that. And where there is water and where there is dirt, we get mud. And so a lot of people where I live don't like mud season that much. Now, if you were in Bob the Canadian's chat just a little while ago, he talked about four by fours. And those are trucks, a four by four that has four wheel drive. So all four wheels of the truck will work. And a lot of people like to take their four by fours out and put it in the mud and drive around. I don't have a four by four, so I don't like mud season, but you can see this little kid right here. They might like mud season. Maybe they like playing in the mud. I am not a fan of mud season. Maybe you are. Uh oh, it's working. Good. It's working. I hope, uh, Amal, how are you? I hope um, the sound is, no. I hope the sound is working okay for everyone. Um, Ivana says that, yeah, it's not working too badly. Ivana says that uh, looks like spring is gone in Poland. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. So the next one we have is blossom. Blossom. The, the hard thing about this word, blossom, is that it could mean a couple different things. It could mean the verb, as in to blossom. So this flower at one time, it was just a seed. But then this part right here is the stem. And that stem will eventually blossom into a flower. But it can also be a noun. So blossom can be a verb, meaning the flower is blossoming. Or you might call this part of the flower, like the good looking part, the pretty part, you might call that the blossom. So be careful with blossom. It can be a verb or it can be a noun. And we could say the flowers are beginning to blossom. And that's what is happening here. Flowers are beginning to blossom. You might also hear this word though, bloom. And those are pretty much synonyms. Bloom and blossom. The flowers are starting to grow. The flowers are starting to blossom. Blossom is when they start looking really pretty. Those yellows, those purples, those whites. Oh, dear. Yeah, a lot of people from Poland. Thank you, Poland. And um, I'm sorry that you're not having weather as nice as we are here in the United States. It is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit where I live. I wish I knew Celsius for that. I could definitely ask Siri, but maybe someone in here knows better than I do. Oh, yes. Hey, Ibrahim is asking about the new book. I would love to talk about that. Um, next week, I'm actually going to read the first chapter in a video. And I'm going to... So the idea of the book is... I'll talk more about it later. But 
It is written so that you will understand it if you're about a B1 or a B2. But every so often, I'm going to add something a little difficult, maybe two or three times a page. And you will have a, a glossary that you can look at at the end that will tell you what that means. But I'm going to make a video next week where I read it aloud. So you'll have the audiobook and you'll also have all of those explanations. Chapter one so far. But yeah, thanks for asking, Ibrahim. Thanks for asking. So the next one, Blossom and Bloom, yeah, same thing. But I wanted to also teach you this word, which is galoshes. Galoshes. You might hear this as rain boots. Rain boots and galoshes, it's the same thing. But to use that in a sentence, I forgot my galoshes and now my shoes are all muddy. Yeah, if you are living in Maine or probably Poland, anywhere that gets a lot of snow, you're going to want to put some galoshes maybe in your back seat. Just have them handy. If something is handy, you can grab it quickly. So maybe during mud season, maybe during spring, you'll want to stick some galoshes in your trunk. We say trunk here in the United States for the back of the car. You may want to stick some galoshes in your trunk so that you'll always have them handy. Galoshes. Galoshes. Shea, interesting that you ask that. I do have another channel. It's called American English Guy 2. American English Guy 2. And in that channel, today I released a video about vaccine passports. That could be a thing that's happening in the United States. So that is something that's in the news right now. And... Um, Something you might be interested in. American English Guy 2. What's the name of the book? Um, the name of the book is, is just the first chapter, and I'm calling it Mike's Story. It's about a man who's in his early 40s, and his wife has left him because he is a raging alcoholic. Oh, no. Uh, Zoe. Oh, this. Is it galoshes? Galoshes? I wonder, I wonder where that word came from, galoshes, because a lot of time in English, we will just take whatever language the word came from. We don't even change it. So karaoke, you know, is definitely a Japanese word. We'll just keep it. So galoshes to me, I wonder if it's Persian. Yeah, in England, I learned this um, a couple days ago wellies wellies yeah or wellingtons that's what rain boots or galoshes are called in england in england yes ivana that ivana taught me that a couple days ago yeah galoshes wellies wellingtons rain boots yeah so Raphael, it's a great question if you are in the united states i think that nobody will know what Wellingtons are. Now, if you describe them, of course, like if we use that sentence, like I forgot my Wellingtons and now my shoes are all muddy. With that context, like, yeah, probably Americans will understand that, but we just don't use that term, wellies. I like it though. Maybe I should start using it. Maybe I should start bringing it. Oh, thank you, Zoe. So galoshes comes from the French and it comes from the Latin. Like so many of our words, like so many of our words in English, the French heavily influenced English. What was it? In 1066, I think it was France. It wasn't France at the time, but France in, invaded England. And so way back then, there was a lot of French that influenced English, which is why if you're an English speaker, or you're a French speaker, or an Italian speaker, or a Portuguese speaker, or Spanish, 
our two languages are are closer than you might think. It is, Maria. Yeah, it is. It's all about context. It really is. That's why I like reading so much. Um, where, uh, so as some of you know, I am I'm, I read. I'm trying to uh, learn Italian. And the more words you know as you're reading or even listening, the more you'll understand because of the context. So, uh, interesting. Rod says it's the same. Galoshes. So, and, you know, Portuguese, French, very close. English is a little further away, but a little further away. All right, the next one here, not galoshes anymore. The next one, these two go together. I love this word. Polywog and tadpole. Polywog and tadpole. So where I live, you will often hear these animals. No, you won't hear the polywogs. The next one you will. But these animals will often be in ponds. And I wanted to film a video where there were polywogs. It's too early in the year, though. It's too early in the year. So these are the little things that are not eggs. They're not frogs yet. They're the things that are in between. And in the United States, it is often very popular to catch these polywogs and these tadpoles. You will hear both words, polywogs and tadpoles. You will hear both words. So polywogs and tadpoles, same exact thing. Same exact thing. The next one. This is what the polywogs and the tadpoles become. Peepers. Peepers. It is a little bit of slang, but that is what we call frogs in the spring because they make this little peeping noise. So where I live, about a mile from my house, there is a pond and you can hear the peepers. If you go outside and you listen really hard, you can hear the peepers. Something just banged in my house. Maybe when it gets a little later in the season, I'll go down and make a video. But peepers, so fun to hear. You, I love hearing that because it means spring is close. Spring is close by. The next one, peeps. This is a popular candy during Easter. So in the United States and in Canada, probably a lot of places around the world, we just celebrated Easter. And one very popular American candy to give during Easter, we call those things peeps. And a lot of people don't like peeps. They are these marshmallow things that have uh, sugar on the outside. But what I want to do is I want to play a video for you right now because I will try some peeps. So this is live, but this part that I'm going to play next is recorded. Another gorgeous spring day here. Let's try some of these peeps. This first one is root beer float. And I'm not sure if you have root beer in your country but we've had root beer here in the united states for a long long time in fact i think it was around even before coca-cola and a root beer float is when you take that soda and you drop in some ice cream just like it says there all right that's what a peep looks like there's marshmallow on the inside and on the outside it's like crusty granulated sugar some big words right there, crusty granulated sugar, like little grains of sugar. That's where granulated comes from. Not bad, actually. A lot of people don't like these for Halloween, but I'll eat a few of these. Not bad. Tastes like a root beer float because you have the marshmallow. 
kind of like vanilla ice cream, some root beer flavoring. The next one, hot tamale. Beer cinnamon. Hot tamales is a candy you can buy and they are hot. You have a little marshmallow on the inside. Some granulated cinnamon sugar on the outside. Ooh, there is a little kick to it. It is a little hot. Not too bad though. The marshmallow balances it out nicely. All right, so there you have it. Taste test of some Peeps. All right, Peeps. Uh, like not not one of my favorite candies. Actually, a lot of people make fun of them if they get Peeps during Easter. Kind of make a face like, ah. Oh. But parents give them to their kids all the time. I don't, but some do. And uh, yeah, Peeps. Stephen King. Hey, I'm reading Stephen King's new book. It's called. It's called Later. It's really good. I might be uh, a quarter of the way finished, but I like it. It's good stuff. Yeah, so peepers are basically frogs, Samra. Yeah, peepers are basically frogs. But yeah, I like it. It's funny. You will hear that definitely where I live. Oh, the peepers are out. That means summer is coming. I did. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Where was that? Bang. Oh, I just lost it. Yeah. Shea, let's talk about that. I am downstairs in my house, but I don't know what happened up there. Somebody fell. <laughs> I don't think somebody dropped something. It was just like this big bang clunk. And so I didn't know what was going on. This microphone probably, you probably didn't hear it, but I heard it a little bit. I don't know. I don't, I'm too old for, there's some Pokemon talking, uh, talk going on in the chat. I don't know what that means, but feel free to discuss Pokemon and yeah, chicks. So those little peeps, they do look like little chicks, right? I, I think we will talk about chicks in just a little while. The next one I want to talk about is thaw. Now, Earlier, I mentioned the snow melting, thawing is a little bit different. And I have a couple sentences for you. Thaw does not mean the same as melt, but they're close. So when you think of melt, think of that ice cube. So you have something solid, it melts, and it becomes liquid. The difference between melting and thawing is that it doesn't change into a liquid. It, it, it goes from being frozen to not being frozen. And a lot of times you will hear this. If you stay outside and it's cold, but then you come inside, you might hear, I need to warm up so my bones can thaw. Now, is that real? No. But we will say that like, oh, I'm so cold. My bones need to thaw out. You might hear that sometimes too, thaw out. Another thing too, sorry to our vegetarian friends, but if you eat meat or let's say vegetables, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes you might need to thaw them out before you can cook them. And the most common thing you'll hear is meat. So to make your meat last longer, you might keep it in the freezer. But before you cook it, you might take it out of the freezer. We call that thawing. So you might leave the meat out for 12 hours for it to thaw. So you can cook it later that night. Maybe in the morning, you take it out of the freezer, leave it in the refrigerator for 12 hours, and it will thaw. But ice melts into water. Hope that makes sense. Those two differences there. Yeah. Oh, Shacham. Excellent choice. There is no difference between defrosting 
and thawing. It's the same word. It's the same thing. But we do have two different words for it. Hey, learn Italian. Con li Maracano. Welcome, my friend. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Stephen King. In fact, Stephen King grew up in the same city I grew up in. Now, he's like 30 years older than I am. But my friend's dad went to school with Stephen King. I've never met him, but I do love Stephen King. Hey, in the chat, what's your favorite Stephen King novel if you are a Stephen King fan? Yeah, let's talk about that. Almost, Samra, almost. We might say that they are dewdrops. So we might say that they kind of are like dew drops right there. Oftentimes when you wake up in the morning and it, it, it hasn't rained, but the, the grass is wet, we will call that dew and sometimes dew drops. Diego, welcome from Brazil watching on replay. Hey, anybody who's watching on replay? Welcome. Welcome. Hope you're learning a little something. So my favorite Stephen King book is probably The Stand. Probably The Stand. But my second favorite one is Il Milio Verde, which is The Green Mile. And I also like La Lunga Marcia, which is uh, The Long Walk. The Long Walk in English. And I know Erroni has read The Long Walk. The Shining. You can't go, can't go wrong with The Shining. I love reading The Shining in winter. I love it. Love it. Oh, Eric. It. Yes. Uh, full Dark No Stars. That is a collection of novellas. You don't hear that word very often in English. If you want to sound very fancy, we have novels and those are works of fiction. Those are books that are fake. Novels are books that are fake. Bob the Canadian did a great live lesson yesterday about books. A novella is in between, we're talking page length, the length of a book. A novella is in between a novel. Novels can be a hundred pages to a thousand pages, you know, or more. Short stories are about, I don't know, 10 pages to maybe 60 or 70 pages. And the novella is in between the two. Sometimes a novella is a long, short story. Sometimes it's a small novel. But just in case, I bet that comes from the French as well. Oh, the dark half. I know this is a lesson about spring. I could talk Stephen King all day, though. The dark half. There is one scene in the dark half. Mm -mm. It haunts me to this day. I will not say what it is, but this man is killed. It's a Stephen King book, right? This man is killed. A part of his body is chopped off and, and stuck in his mouth. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Yeah, The Secret Window. Good one. I think that's probably a short story by him. I don't think it's a novella. Yeah, a great short story by him that was made into a movie starring uh, Johnny Depp, I believe. Yeah. Ibrahim, you should definitely check out Stephen King and we should probably get back to the uh, spring lesson because some people probably clicked on thinking, Oh, I'm going to learn about spring 
And if they're clicking on now, they're what? Stephen King lesson? Oh, I could. Okay. All right. Uh, members know this already. I made a video about what I want to do this summer. I'm going to spend the night in a cemetery and teach English. One lesson every hour. So I'm going to do that. But there's a pet cemetery that's not too far from my house. Jamie, my wife, suggested, why don't you spend the night in the pet cemetery to teach English? No, I can't do it. Too scary. I can never hear the name Gage without thinking pet cemetery. And I have had a few students named Gage. All right. Uh, see, Marco, I promise we're going to get back to spring. We just got sidetracked for a minute. We just got sidetracked for a minute. And when you get sidetracked, it's like you get distracted. So this lesson is about spring. Somebody mentioned Stephen King. It might have been my fault. And we started talking Stephen King. But let's get back to spring. I promise. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we were talking about thaw a minute ago. And we I think we did everything with thaw. So the next one is not that fun. But you have to do it. You have to do it. And in fact, right now, I believe my wife and son are cleaning out our garage. Cleaning out our garage right now. That is typical spring cleaning. So after the long winter, oftentimes things will get very dirty. Where I live, I think I, um, if you have seen the video I made about walking to my mom's house, I talked about this. In the winter, the roads get slippery. So trucks will come around with sand, salt to make the roads not as slippery. Well, that salt and that sand just stay on the road until late spring. And that has to be cleaned up and it gets everywhere. You know, just like in Star Wars where Anakin says the sand gets everywhere. If you're a Star Wars fan, yeah, the sand is everywhere. So during spring, a lot of families will clean up their yards. They'll clean up their garages and just get everything ready for the summer. So you might hear that quite a bit. Spring cleaning. After a long winter, I love to get my spring cleaning done in April. There's a little sentence there for you if you would like to practice with your English. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, Mega, we do not use Lori here. That is just, a, it's a name of a truck. I know that. Like, hey, I'm going to drive my Lori. I'm going to drive my truck. But we just don't, we just don't say that here in the United States. Marco, thank you so much. That's a very nice compliment. I'm trying. I'm trying. I've been doing YouTube for about a year. I've been teaching in a classroom for 20 years. I'm trying, trying to get better. The next one right here is spring fever. I have to be careful with this one. Spring fever. Yesterday, while I was out driving, it seemed like everyone had spring fever. Many people were revving their cars. So revving it means making them loud, stepping on the gas pedal and making them loud. So spring fever is that time of year when animals, including humans, feel the warm weather. And there is that natural instinct to mate, I guess. That's what we call spring fever. When the weather starts getting warm, think about a bear. Think about a bear. That bear has been hibernating 
all winter, hibernating. That's what we call it when bears stay in caves. They've been hibernating all winter. When the weather gets warmer, they come out of their cave. They're looking to do two things, eat and find mates. How about that? This is a family channel. But when we say spring fever, that's what we mean. People are just a lot more energy. They're outside enjoying the air. And then you have, you know, the birds and the bees kind of stuff. Bees do it, right? They need to keep their species moving along. Birds do it. Spring fever. That's a common term we have in the United States. Spring fever. Okay. I hope that's nice. Is that Japanese? I hope that's nice. They might be saying awful things about me. Oh, shakam. Love it. Declutter. Declutter. That is a great word right there. Declutter. So if you have too many items, you know, and uh, your place is feeling a little small because you have too much stuff, you could declutter and get rid of some of it. Oh, yeah. The Green Mile. Oh, John Coffey. I could talk Stephen King all day. Yeah, revving. I hope you like it, revving. So if you have a loud engine and you step on the gas over and over, we could say you're revving your engine. Man, so much good vocabulary here. Declutter, revving. Hey, if you are enjoying this lesson, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I got a little thing right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, maybe, maybe you want to become a member. I don't know. Like Maria did. We got some good videos there for you. What is that? Yellow lorry slow. Nowhere to go. I have not heard that before. Is that common? Yellow lorry slow. Nowhere to go. Maybe that's a, a line from a song, Marco. Spring fever. If you have any questions about spring fever, let me know. The next one is spring break. Spring break. I love it. We have spring break where I live in a couple weeks. Not next week, but the week after. So many American schools will have spring break during the months of March or April. It just depends on the state. But a spring break is usually a week-long vacation where you can escape. During normal years, in Maine, where I live, it's cold. If a family has money, they may choose to go somewhere warm. Florida is a popular destination for spring breakers. When people are on spring break, we call them spring breakers. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. You know what I'd like to do? Just to thank everyone who is a member. Just for a couple minutes. Let's do a members only chat. Just for a couple minutes. I will keep doing the lesson, but just if any members want to get a question in, just a little easier to see. Oh, Marco says they are. They are lyrics of a song. You never give me your money. Are you serious? Is that is that a line from you give never give me? I didn't even know that's what Paul McCartney was singing. I have been listening to that song for 25 years, maybe 30 years. Great song. I, I was actually listening to Abbey Road this week, the deluxe version, something. I was listening to that song, something. And Marco, good taste in music. I did make a lesson on learning English with the Beatles. If I was a really good YouTuber, I would have that link in the chat, but I'm not. I'm not. Next one. Oh, drizzle. 
Love this one. Drizzle. Now, if you notice, this can have two meanings. Drizzle is a good term to know because it's not misting. Misting is when it's raining just a little bit. It's not even rain. They're little small drops. We call it misting. And it's not raining. I'm sure most people know what rain is. This is in between. So it's not misting and it's not raining, but it is drizzling. So you might need to grab your galoshes if it's drizzling out. Drizzle is a good verb to know. It's not misting, but it's not quite raining either. Somewhere in between, drizzle. Now, that's one way to use it when you're talking about rain. But you can also take a look at this part right here. You can also drizzle this icing on your cake. You can also drizzle icing onto a cake. Okay, so two ways to use drizzle. Both of them mean like little things dropping. But if you want some upper level vocabulary, some advanced vocabulary, might want to use drizzle. Might want to use drizzle. Just checking to see if I had any other videos to show you for these words. I don't think I do. The next one, fragrant. This might be a little advanced as well. So if something smells really good, like I bet those flowers there smell really good, you can describe them as being fragrant. Fragrant means it has a nice smell. Flowers often smell fragrant in the spring. All right. Get everybody back in here. Just want to I just want to say thank you to all the members. Fragrant. I think I have another way. Yeah. So let's look at this. Fragrant is an adjective and that describes something smelling good. Fragrance is a noun, and you can also use it like perfume. Oh, what's that fragrance you're wearing? It smells really good. Fragrant, fragrance, not so easy to say. Fragrant, fragrance. What? No way. Do I? Did I have a thumbnail about drizzle? I don't remember that. Mega's been around for a long time. Thanks, Mega. Oh, Maria, be careful. The spring breakers were out in Cancun. Uh, was that a bad time, Maria? Did you have a bad time with all of the American youngsters? I hope not. I hope they were nice to you. Is that true? Was that lavender? Do you think that's lavender? I don't know. I know Bob the Canadian's wife would know better than I would, but I'm going to I'm going to go with Danny here. So if that is lavender, I don't know. I thought it might be I don't know anything about flowers. Whoops, let's get rid of that. I don't know anything about flowers. So if you're saying lavender, I'm going to definitely agree. Lavender. Thank you, Danny. Lavender. It is. All right. Thank you. It is. Yeah, Samra. Nice. Yeah, you might say fragrant is uh, how your washing detergent smells. Detergent. If you want to wash your clothes, you probably want that washing detergent to be fragrant. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, Maria. Trying to sleep. And the American youngsters were keeping you up. All right. That is definitely lavender. Definitely lavender. Now, Sita, 
Sita, you did not have to do that, but I thank you so much. That is so awesome. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Did not have to do that, but I appreciate it. Thank you, Sita, for becoming a member as well because it helps pay for the the software that I'm using to teach the lesson and help pay for the microphone that I'm using today, help pay for the lights. Yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to become a legitimate YouTube teacher and members are helping, subscribers are helping, and the Super Chats, of course, are helping out. So, Sita, thank you so much from Brazil. I really appreciate it. The next one, I think we're good with fragrant, right? The next one, this is some upper level vocabulary as well. Balmy, balmy. Again, Sita, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Balmy. So instead of saying it's really hot out today, you can, if you want to bring your vocabulary up a little bit, You can say, in the late spring, the weather can feel downright balmy. Balmy. It means really hot out. So you can see that desert. I mean, it's got to be balmy wherever that picture was taken. Just downright balmy. The next one. This one, uh, this one pains me a little bit. It pains me a little bit to talk about, and I know Samra is going to feel the same way, but uh, I got this alert on my phone this morning, and it said the pollen was going to be high where I live, and pollen can only mean one thing, allergies. I'm not sure how many of you suffer from allergies. But this can be a reason that you don't like spring because your nose is always dripping. You're always sneezing. You're always coughing, sniffing, clearing your throat. Pollen. Lots of it in the air. So that's the next thing I want to talk about is allergies and wait. Sorry, we'll go back to that one. Metamorphosis. Pollen. So, I mean, pollen is great. Bees will take that pollen and spread it around and it's all great. Really helps things grow. But the pollen is not good for my allergies. So pollen, it's that little stuff you usually can't see in the air. But if you have allergies, you definitely know it's there. So you can have allergies, as as some of you probably know better than I do. You can have allergies in the spring, but you can also have allergies to pets. I am also allergic to cats and dogs. Had to use the cough button because just talking about allergies makes me cough. Yeah, and hay fever. Hay fever. Definitely. Itchy eyes. Watery eyes. Hay fever. Thank you, Shaham. Oh, Patty Candle in France. I'm so sorry. Also, just a little, just a little allergic. Before I turned like 35, I had no allergies. I turned 35, I'm allergic to cats. I'm allergic to dogs. I have hay fever. I don't know. I don't that Zoe, that's a great idea. I hope all is going well in Iran. Um yeah, smells the different smells. It's a good one. I want to make one on different sounds too. Good one. Yes, Samra. I know Samra has allergies. Not fun. Nabil. Nabil Monster. 
How are you? Welcome. And how many, how many people in here have allergies? This is way more common than I thought. Uh, Samra. Hang on. Samra. Samra. We need to talk. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Samra is a veterinarian in Turkey. So she says I have no pet allergies. I thought she had I thought she had allergies. I didn't see the no there. Okay. That's perfect that Samra does not have allergies. That would be bad. Every year I have a few students who really love cats or they really love dogs, but they say they're allergic. So I feel so bad for them. They're always coming in with red eyes and runny noses. It's like, why are your parents? Oh, dust. Dust. It's often. Oh, I'm allergic to abrupt changes. So really quick changes in the weather. It's good to know. Good to know. Oh. Marco, glad you're back, and I'm glad you sold something. That's always good. It's always good. Being good is busy a lot of times if you have a job where you have to sell things. Being busy is good. Yeah, Sam, I, I love that you are a veterinarian. I love the picture you sent us of your coffee cup. Seems like a, a great life in Turkey. A, a friend of mine yesterday... So he writes books. Um, I've read some books for him. I'll, I can go into that later. But his book yesterday just came out in Turkish. I should put up a um, a post about his book in Turkish. Did I? I think I took a picture. But yeah, he was so happy that his book came out in Turkish yesterday. Did I take a picture? Did I accidentally delete it? I might have accidentally deleted it. Um, I put this picture up a while ago on social media, but we actually do have mud season milk. There's a local milk company that, because their milk is chocolate and brown, kind of looks like watery mud. Uh, great question. Is it correct? A uh, customer came. Oh, oh, oh. Is it correct that a, a customer came or a client came? Either way, whichever one, whatever, whoever you're talking to will know that. Um, if it's a one time purchase, if you want to get technical, probably a customer, right? One time customer, a client. You often will do repeat work for them, but we use those interchangeably here in the United States. So yeah, perfect. Perfect. All right. I, I, I'll try. There are a lot of people that like dogs and there are a lot of people that eat like cats. I try to make everybody happy, <laughs> but yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Turkish, Turkish, great language. The next one. Oh, it's actually the last one. The next one is Memorial Day. And that is a, you know what? We actually have another one. I want to go back and do metamorphosis because that's a tough one. But Memorial Day, this is a holiday we have here in the United States. And it's always the last Monday in May. And Memorial Day, we have that day off from work. We don't have to go to work that day. Some Americans do, but most Americans don't. Teachers don't. And it is called the, hang on. I want that one. It is called the unofficial start to summer. So as you know, summer in the Northern Hemisphere starts in June. But in the United States, we'll often say that Memorial Day, that last Monday in May, is the unofficial start to summer. We have another 
day called Labor Day, and that is the first Monday of September. That's often called the unofficial end to summer. It's a very sad day, in my opinion, because I love summer. I love summer. My favorite month is July. Can't wait to do a summer lesson. One more. I hope this has been helpful to you. Maybe the hardest word of all. It's called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Fun to say. I'll say it a couple more times. Metamorphosis. If you speak a romance language, I do think this comes from Latin. So you might have an idea. When we use morph in English, that often means change. That often means change. But metamorphosis, let's get rid of that, is when something changes a great deal. So you might have something like this. Um, after her divorce, she went through a metamorphosis. So something in her life really changed her. It might be for the good. It might be for the bad. But a metamorphosis is a really big change. But during spring, we will use it like this. So you have your little caterpillar here. And then the caterpillar goes into the cocoon. And then it becomes a butterfly. So that is a, a really big change as well. Metamorphosis. But you can use that anytime there is a big change. Maybe since you've started learning English, you've gone through a metamorphosis. Maybe you've changed big time. I hope you have for the good. For the good. I hope you have. Let's see. Oh, Angelo using um, morph into a sentence. I love it. I don't want to have tattoos because it will morph into something unrecognizable when my skin gets old. Angelo, maybe quote of the stream. I always worry about that. I wanted a face tattoo. How cool would that look, right? Just put a, a big tattoo on my face. But as I get older, it'll start wrinkling. I don't think I can get a face tattoo as a teacher. Maybe a neck, right on my neck. A neck tattoo. I don't think I can. I don't think I can. But, oh yeah. I think um, maybe. Oh, more Pokemon talk. Last week, I think I got into Blackpink. Maybe I need to get into Pokemon now. Pokemon. That's what I was thinking, right? If you've ever seen the movie, The Hangover, like I need to get a face tattoo. I need to. I think that could step up my English teaching game. If I had a face tattoo, I think that would get more subscribers. I need to do that. Oh, wait. No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. No face tattoo. I don't think Jamie would like the face tattoo. All right. I hope you all have enjoyed this lesson. Hope you're all doing well. We've been here for an hour. So hope this was all good. Uh, check out Rod, the Brazilian English teacher. He has an interview. It's not live, but there's an interview on his channel. Check it out. I'm going to try to say goodbye to everybody when I end this stream. But with this software that I use, sometimes it's kind of tough. Thank you all for joining. Adios.